Have you ever wondered how PC builders make complex tubing runs that have two or more bends? Well, this video is for you. I'm gonna be sharing my method that I use to measure and bend complex tubing runs with more than one bend. Let's get to it. So here we have an example of a tubing run that is gonna require more than one 90 degree bend. So we're gonna to have to come down from this height and find a way over here and come into the fitting. So to measure the distance between these two tubes to determine how much tubing is gonna be needed before the next bend, you're gonna to wanna to prop up a template tube like I have here. This is not something I'm gonna use in any build. It's just a 90 degree that I use for instances like this. And this is a straight piece of tubing that I also use for instances like this. So in cases like this, where a tube is gonna be three bends, currently the only bend that I have to worry about with a length for right now is gonna be the second bend here. I can make this first bend anywhere on the tube as long as it has enough length this way that I can trim accordingly and trim it down to the size that I need it. If you make it too short, obviously you're gonna have to redo it, but if you always shoot over for the first 90 degree bend, you won't have any issue because you can trim it down as necessary, which is a very, very easy thing to do. So the only bend that you're gonna have to worry about is gonna be your second bend, which is gonna be right here. Your third bend will also have to worry about length, but your second bend does not play into the length of this bend yet. So all you have to worry about is this length right here. So to find the length, I like to use a ruler that has very clear millimeter markings on it. And I measure from the bottom of this tube to the top of this tube. That way I'm getting the entire length of the tube and it's easy to measure again on the ruler as it's harder to remember inside, outside, outside, inside. It's just outside top of the tube outside bottom of the tube. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna find where the top tube is parallel or however you would like it to look. You're gonna just keep it there with your hand and then you're gonna plop the ruler down onto this surface here to measure where the bottom of the tube is sitting. Now, as you can see, right about here where we have about 100 millimeters. So there's a hundred millimeter distance between the top of this tube and the bottom of this tube. So as you're bending this second bend right here, you can use this ruler for reference on the table as you're creating your bend to make sure that the bottom of your tube is lined up with the ruler and the top of your tube is lined up with the hundred millimeter. That way you're sure that you're getting a hundred millimeter length between top and bottom of both bends. So here's a tube that you just saw me bend a 90 degree angle on, and here's 100 millimeters. So this is where the end of the bend should land, not where we wanna start the bend. If you start the bend at 100 millimeters, you're gonna end up around maybe 130 ending, with the top of the tube and that would be way too long. So we wanna start the bend before we get to 100 millimeters as we want the top of the tube to land at 100 millimeters and go this way. So what we can do is we can look over here at this bend and see that the middle of the bend falls roughly at 15 millimeters and the end of the bend falls roughly at 30 millimeters. So we can subtract 30 from 100 millimeters and we can find that the bend should start right around 70 millimeters. The middle of the bend should be at about 85 and the end should be at about 10. So what I typically do is I pinch the tube right around 85 millimeters or wherever you need to pinch it in the middle of where the bend should be. I pinch it where the middle of the bend should be and I take that and I put that portion 
over the heat gun directly. And I just keep that portion over the heat gun so I don't lose sight of it. And I allow the tube to heat up specifically right there. That way the bend can happen right here. And as the tube heats up, I expand out a little bit, but the majority of where the heat's gonna be is gonna be in the middle of the bend. That way that is where the tube naturally will want to bend. I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up at 85 millimeters and I'm gonna bring it back over here and show you how I bend the tube to hit 100 millimeters. Okay, so you can see that the bend is roughly gonna be the middle right around 85. So this is, I check mid bend, and if it's good, I continue with that bend. If it's not, I'll straighten the tube out, move a little left or right depending, but this is looking good. So I'm gonna continue heating the tube and bending it. So a little sanity check here. Might be slightly long, but again, this is very much a feel process. So you may end up having to bend the same tube a couple times depending. We're gonna go with this and see what happens. But as you can see, you are able to heat the tube bend it, bring it to the ruler, making sure the lengths are appropriate. And this is how you can get the right length between both bends. So you can use this technique for tubes that have two bends or three bends or even more than three bends. So back to the template here, we're now gonna find out the length here that we need before we make our last bend. The idea for this tube was to come here bend down and then bend over. So we got these two bends and now we just need to determine how long from here to here we need before we need to make another bend. Now for this particular tube, we can either have the bend go really close to here and out, or we can have it come out further and out. I think I'm gonna have it come out to right around where this is that way I have a really easy measuring point to determine exactly how long this part of the tube needs to be. So here we can see from the edge of this Allen key hole to the edge of this tube, it's roughly 136 millimeters. So we can go ahead and replicate that on our tubing. Okay, so again, going for our measurement, we can see that right down here is roughly 136 millimeters. So the end of the bend needs to be at 136. And if we remember, this was about a 30 millimeter bend here. So 136 minus 30 would be 106. So this is where the bend needs to start. So add 15 to 106. So that would be 111 would be five and then 121 would be 15. So right about here is where we need to make our last bend. So using this measurement technique, you can go ahead and make the last bend of your tube. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and jump to the finished product here. That way we can see what it looks like. Okay, so here we have our final tube with the final bend right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this all attached up so we can see how it fits. Okay, so there we go. This is looking parallel. This is nice and straight, and this is nice and level, and we got a nice straight shot into the fitting right here. So you can use this measurement technique to do tubes with more than two bends. You can use it for three or four, however many bends in your tube that you want. Just know that the complexity of it does increase as you make more bends in the tube, but this is how I bend tubes with multiple bends in the same run. It works well, it's pretty precise. And again, you're probably gonna have to bend multiple versions of the same tube before you get it correct. It's not always gonna be on the first try and that's okay. Just make sure you get plenty of extra tubing to use and to practice with and take your time. That way it looks as good as it possibly can. It's not as complicated as it looks to get a tube with more than one bend to line up parallel and with all of the ports correctly. It just takes time and patience and a willingness to try and fail 
because you're definitely gonna have to rebend the tube more than once. And if you do get it on the first try, lucky you. Unless you're going for the look of having 90 degree fittings in the middle of your run, now you can save a little bit of money and forego those extra fittings. I would definitely recommend practicing on some tubing that you don't need on complex bending and measuring because your bends might be a little bit different than mine, so your measurements might be slightly different. And that's just something that you're gonna have to learn as you go about building these complex tubing runs. If you have a different process on creating complex tubing runs, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section below as I'm always curious as to what others do and things that I can incorporate into my own process to make it better. If you like this video, you can check out more Tectonic Systems videos by clicking here. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.